So now that we've created ourselves a document, and now that we know how to navigate our document, let's go ahead and set up our document. And so we're gonna be going over the margins, guides, and the columns. And these are all just features that are gonna help us stay in line and in sync with ourselves, because we have a big white space here. And if we wanna make like grids or we want all of our text to look nice and orderly, we need to create some stuff to make sure that we aren't you know, having text go down here, then it slowly drifts right and slowly drifts back left. We want it to be in nice, organized lines. So the first thing we're gonna go over is let's go over the margins. And you can see them right here in the purple and the pink lines. If you need to adjust them, go up to layout and go to margins and columns, and it'll be up here in the margins. Click on the little preview box right here so that when we actually adjust things, we'll see it move. And right here is to make all the settings the same. So if I adjust one of them, they'll all move at the exact same time. And if I undo one of them, then we can just adjust one at a time. So once we were in here, let's say we wanted zero margins. All we have to do is type zero up here, and you'll notice that once I click away, that they'll all go to zero, and now we have no margin. And you'll see that it's going off of InDesign's Pika system. So if you wanna type in inches though, you can actually type in like one inch, and whoops, don't click enter, I always accidentally do that. Just type it in and click somewhere else, and you'll notice that it adjusted it did the translation for you. You can do the exact same thing. For example, let's go 10 millimeters. You can do that and click away, and you'll notice that it adjusts exactly to 10 millimeters. So you can, it's gonna be in Picas, and you know, there isn't any button to change that, but you can type in what you want, and it'll go ahead and make the conversion for you. Like I said, if you uncheck this, we can, you know, put in anything here. We can go like 10 millimeters down here, and like 20 centimeters right here, and, you know, just kind of, change things up and 20 centimeters is a lot. And that's why I did that. If we link them all back together, then they'll all go back to the normal one. So margins are important because it allows us to sort of heed the space of the edge of the page. None of us like to look at text that's at the very edge. We need sort of some blank space so that our eyes can adjust to where it is. No book or anything is ever printing on the very edge. They print just a little bit in. Textbooks will even print even farther in so they can add like little uh, footnotes and stuff like that to the bottom. But that's just where the margins are. Right beneath margins, we have columns. Columns are neat because all you have to do is click on them, and you'll see right here that it's gonna create a three column grid. Great for like a portfolio um, piece if you wanna like put a bunch of pictures, or you can maybe make it like into a pamphlet. And you can put gutter in between these. So the gutter is just the spacing, uh, the quote unquote dead space in between the columns. And this allows you, so again, that the stuff isn't right on top of each other between the columns, just like at the edge of the page. You don't want your text to end right here and then the other text to begin right, you know, right here as well. It'll, you know, blend together and it won't look very good. So we can increase the gutter by just clicking, making it go up. We can decrease the gutter and if we don't want a gutter for some reason, we can click on zero and it'll go down and it'll just be a three line uh, document like so. And this goes up a lot so you can keep you know bringing this up and it's going to just do all the splits for you and so let's leave it at let's go with a fourth right here so now that we've got this sort of setup going here it's like a four column document with i think it was what did we end up with a 10 millimeter margin so now we've got this document set up maybe we've been given these specifications and we've set this up the next thing we can create are guides guides are really important because they allow us to create uh sort of these markers for ourselves and we can delete them later and they'll never show up on the document, anything like that. So what you can do is you need to just go up to here into the rulers. If the rulers aren't there, the rulers which are these little measurements right here, if they aren't there, go up into view and you want to go and there's the hide rulers button, click on it and they'll disappear. So yours might be checked, so go up to view and hit show rulers. And so we'll have the rulers right here and all you have to do to create a guide is click and drag on down. Um, to create a horizontal guide. And then if you wanna create a vertical one, click on the left side and drag over. If you wanna adjust it really, really like exact, click on it right here. And you can see right here, you can type in a number as well. So again, if we wanna type in like one inch, it'll put it right at one inch. And if we wanna to go to this one, which is the little one right here, and let's put this one at one inch as well. And so right at this point, it's one inch over and one inch down. And you know you could create a bunch of different little guides here. And what these are doing is they're just keeping you in line with yourself. So if I created some text right here, and we'll go over how to create text more in depth in the future. But if I created text right here, and I just typed in some random stuff, like so, with an extra E on random, um, what it's gonna do is it's actually going to allow me to lock it onto these guides. So I can lock it onto the column, 
right here. I could lock it onto the margin. You'll see that it jumps to it right there, it jumps to the edge. So I can lock it onto the, the margin right there. And then I can also lock it onto all of my guides. So you'll see that it's kind of hugging this right down here because we created a guide. So if we want to go up here and let's say we created some text, we want it to go right there. And now let's move this one. Uh, well, actually, let's just put this in the center like so. And you'll notice that it's also locking onto the center of the columns. It's going to try to lock on as much as possible to keep you in line with yourself. So just kind of move it around and you'll see these, these things up here. But now if I wanted to create another one of these, so I create another one and let's go to this column, but I want it to be in the exact same place. If this guide wasn't here, I would have to guess or wait until it does it for me. But again, it can get a little bit off sometimes. So what you can do is you can create a guide right on the top and they'll actually lock to the elements themselves as well. And then now if I ever add any new elements, it'll just lock straight to it for me and everything I know will be right in the right place that it should be. And like everything else in Adobe InDesign, this is really customizable. To start customizing the guides, we can actually go up to view and you'll notice the rulers are right here. Again, if you wanna turn them on or off, or we can go down here to grids and guides and we can hide them all at just one button click which is gonna hide all the guides. Um, the margin and the columns are quote unquote guides as well. So we can hide everything. We kind of just see how the page is being laid out or we can go back into here and let's make them visible once again. Um, but let's go ahead and also lock them. So if we've got them in the, the place that we want them to be and we know we're not gonna be adjusting them in the future, we can go ahead and lock them so we don't make a mistake and change one during the process of building the page because you might not know you accidentally changed the guide and then suddenly you'll realize that all of you know these two columns are aligned here but then you accidentally change the guide down so these two columns are you know 10 pixels lower and that would actually cause a really big problem because then you'd have to take everything and move it up and you might have been formatting for everything being 10 pixels lower so to avoid those headaches and those mistakes you can lock the guides and you'll notice i can't touch them anymore until i go back and unlock the guides also in here what we have is we have um, the grids and you'll notice that this is getting kind of <laughs> tiresome having to go view grids every single time So there's a bunch of keyboard shortcuts here on the right And if you're using a lot of these a lot of times you can just go ahead and click on one of these and it'll help you um, Or not click on them. You can use your keyboard memorize a couple of these and you can switch back and forth really really quickly We can also show some grids um, you can turn off the document grid uh, the snap to feature right here and you can also turn off snap to guides and that's so when i was showing you earlier how it you know it locks to this it locks to that you can turn off all of that so maybe you get annoyed because you're trying to you know move it really really close but it keeps jumping to it you can go ahead and turn that off really quickly and then move it close and then turn it back on so that it stops jumping to it if you want to see the document grid you can go ahead and click this button right here and you'll see that it's all gridded out like so and this is just a way of being able to move the things as well and sort of lock to it. And you'll notice that the document guide is not um, snapped to by default because a lot of people don't wanna be you know, confined to this grid right here. So they, they didn't turn it on by default, but if you really do wanna work in a grid-like manner, you can turn that snap to feature on and it'll snap to every one of these blocks. And finally, the last tool that I find that's really important in the view is actually being able to switch between the screen modes. So there's actually isn't a keyboard shortcut here. It's not listed, but it is a shortcut. If we hit the preview tab right here, it's gonna remove everything and we can preview the final document. This is really, really helpful because a lot of times if we're looking at this, we don't want to see all of this stuff right here. We wanna see how the end product's gonna look. So I switch back and forth between these all the time. And by default, it's actually on your W key right like so. So if you just click W, it's going to send you to the preview mode. If you go up here, you'll notice that all the modes are right here. So you can actually switch by just clicking. But I like to just have the W key right there because like I said, I switch between this all the time when I'm creating a document because I want to see how it's going to look when it prints. And if you want like a really unencumbered view, you can hold shift W and it's going to bring you up into uh, presentation mode and this is going to really just allow you to back up and only see the document and how it's going to come out. Then you can shift uh, w back down and that's right here. That's going to be the presentation mode right there. So that really covers the basics of setting up your document and getting it into a way that is going to help you in the future and prevent future headaches because if a document is unorganized, it can get you know really, really tedious later on down the road having to adjust things by little bits to keep everything organized. So this will help you really just nail that all down and get a really good start so that you can have a really productive work session.